of the beef ration and nutrition decision software developed by Iowa State and adopted by the beef team uh, the latter part of last year and introduced at the uh, 2008 Extension Conference. Uh, before I proceed, uh, I, I would like to remind everybody that we will have follow-up sessions and sessions scheduled are uh, a week from today, uh, January 29th, with Carl Harbour, and on February the 5th with Justin Wagner. So our group is really excited about the use of this software and want to do our level best to continue uh, providing active support and helping people to better exploit its, its many attributes. Uh, Andy, how am I doing so far? Uh, Feel free to, to uh, let me know here as I go on. Is everything okay? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on back. Well, uh, the thing I, I hope everybody uh, notices uh, once you you initiate the program, you've already taken care of all the macro protections that are part of the micro Microsoft Excel, but uh, I would certainly recommend uh, the first time going through and adjusting the weather data that is that is relevant to your particular location. And there are particular web links, temperature, wind speed, and rainfall. The other important aspect that I, I want to point out is as you do the diets for, say, cows, that you remain mindful of the size of the cows and the defaults that are present in in the defaults here on the setting pages. Uh, yesterday I, I did a uh, first first calf uh, cow diet, uh, calving heifers, first calf heifers, and I selected the medium option. The diet was selected for that, and I will explain that a bit later on. So you need to be mindful of the weights that are being used as you're doing your particular diets. Now I'm going to scroll back to the top, and I want to, to reinforce that a one-time entry of putting your name, uh, the consultant's name, and uh, also when you initiate a new producer, you click the new producer screen, you type the name in for the producer that you want, and then you proceed on. It will save. That should be the first step that you do. And, and Ron, I apologize for, for starting here at the basic zero because I know you've pushed on beyond that. But it's important that as you conduct these diets that you ensure that the producer, the respective feed library is drug into the particular application that you wish to uh, conduct some ration work with. Uh, I'm waiting now for the hourglass to go away. It told me the file has been saved. No name is there, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to select Test Producer. And the information, the, the folder containing the information for the producer named Test Producer will be brought up. Uh, the next step, once you pull uh, or select the name of the producer that you wish to work with is to go down to your feeds library down here on that tab and select it. Now this is a good test because it tells you here that I selected test producer. The feed library called feed mill is what are the two accounts that are being uh, evaluated at this present time. So I would click on the hide and uh, you can clear the feed, feed stuffs that you've selected at this point. But uh, at this point in time, you might make changes. Uh, I just changed the feed price here of alfalfa from $60 to $80 a ton. Say a nutrient analysis came back. It was, it was a weedy, mature alfalfa. And rather than 13%, 
Uh, I'm just going to say it's uh, 11%. It's an old stand alfalfa, and that just happens to be it's a low it's a low protein alfalfa. But it, let's just assume it's grassy and it's it's a mess. But I put it in there nonetheless. And uh, you can select, I believe, up to nine different ingredients. And uh, just be mindful that you should, whenever you do a ration, to make sure that you check the price and also that you select uh, one number per feed ingredient so that you don't have a duplicate duplicate number two for two different uh, feedstuffs. That, that is very important. Now, the, a major hang-up for a lot of people early on, once they were done selecting the ingredients for their uh, ration balancing session, would be to go down here on the bottom and select a tab down here. Uh, for example, to jump to cows or even to feed yard. That is not the case. I want to emphasize that you do not select within the feed library uh, at the bottom of, of the tabs. Rather, you select one of the buttons that is up here. And so in this case, uh, I'm going to select feed yard, which is I'm going to do a growing diet. I clicked on that, and you see that the uh, feed library file has been updated and saved. It now takes you automatically into the feed yard module. Now I'm going to click over to the uh, cam again to see if there's any outstanding questions. Full screen at the bottom left. Uh, okay, where do I do that at? Uh, scale to full screen view. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, now I can't. See Carl's on. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Are there any other questions? Sandy? Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Well, uh, back to the feed yard module, and I quickly want to emphasize that. Uh, feed yard is, is rather confusing uh, for many of you that might be thinking about growing diets. Uh, for the time being, uh, we'll think of anything that is dry lot, backgrounding, as, as a feed yard module. Uh, the, stalker, the stalker tab uh, is something that's fairly new in development. And for the time being, we're going to really focus on the applications for the cows, heifers, the breeding and growing bowls and feed yard. And we'll just put the stalker tab away for a while. Now, the first thing you do when you get into this feed yard module is to actually name uh, the pen or the series name. And I call this test ration pair up with test producer. Now, another check is to make sure that there is actually a producer name here that you're intending on working with. That is. That is critical because sometimes the software will open a module and not have a name of a producer. Uh, the other thing I want to emphasize is to make sure your dates are straight. Uh, you know, it could be uh, you're still on 2008, uh, and that's ha it's easy to happen here this time of the year. But uh, I just created a diet here this morning uh, for a feeding period starting on January the 22nd. Uh, the other thing is, I'm sure many of you have already noticed the, the nuances of clicking off of a, a cell to go back and select. That, that, that is very important. But the other thing uh, that Ron Seifert and I discovered a while back is that it is important to make sure that we have some value in this weighted 50% choice. Uh, when you initially fill out these cells, this will be blank, and so you are encouraged to click on the question mark and select the options here for implant, frame size, and gender, such that uh, a mid-weight at 50% choice is expressed, because many of the equations uh, utilized in the software are based upon these very factors. Uh, facility, hair, hair condition, hair coat, hide, 
temperature uh, at 28 degrees based upon the temperature that I set for Manhattan, Kansas. Always, and I want to emphasize, always make sure that you place a maintenance factor of one. That's that's something that Iowa State failed to have uh, incorporated into the software before they released it to us, and I suspect in uh, future upgrades that, that issue will be taken care of. You also select whether the animal is implanted, and if you're in a feed yard situation, uh, uh, selecting whether or not you're dealing with a beta agonist or if you're feeding MGA. Now, uh, once you fill out these, the factors, you want to come down here and you will name a ration, especially if it's the first time with a producer, a first time producer that you're filling out, you'll have a ration name. Now, notice here I did not uh, uh, enter a weight or a date, and I'm going to put a, a date in here, but right now notice this is a real problem for a lot of, pro uh, a lot of you folks using the software. You'll see this pound sign number exclamation pounds. There is nothing there, and, and that really has thrown a lot of people. I'm going to go ahead and put a date in there. I'm going to say uh, February 22nd. I'm just going to balance for one year. Okay? I'll put it in there. Now, look, uh, I did this intentionally, uh, February 22nd of 08. Uh, I do this because uh, before you give up and get frustrated with the software, make sure your dates are straight. So uh, make sure you're on the same wavelength with the actual calendar. Now, uh, I put in the 22nd for 09, and even then, we still have the pound sign number exclamation. Ron, you might recall we had this situation uh, crop up on us. They ask, why does this happen? Again, before you get frustrated, scroll down to the selected feedstuffs, and these feedstuffs selected here should be exactly what you selected in the feed library. Okay, that's critical. Well, again, the reason this happened, because if you go over here, and I, I did this intentionally before our Adobe Connect session, if you look at dry matter intake, I got 8.2 pounds. Estimated is 13.4. Consumption is 6.1. Why did this not work or a project a weight at the end of this one month of feeding? The answer is simply be because of this. Uh, we are well below the upper and lower scope of the formulas used to project animal performance. And so if you go back in and say, wait a minute, intake is only 61% or 39% less than what is projected, I better go back in there and change my feedstuffs accordingly. So I'm using a sorghum silage here. I'm going to jump that up to 12 pounds. And look what happens automatically there when I change that one feedstuff. Uh, just by increasing the amount of sorghum silage from 4 to 12 pounds, now my calves have gained uh, 559 and I started them with 50 pounds. So there's 49 pounds of, of gain there using the sorghum. Uh, I'm putting uh, some, uh, some alfalfa back in there from 2 to 4 pounds. And I'm going corn rolled back out, down to 2. I'm going to put uh, uh, 4 pounds of corn in there to see what it does. Uh, my consumption is at 95%. That's the first key uh, statistic I would look at is to see where where you are standing at. Uh, I would go ahead and add another pound of corn there and see what happens. Uh, I'm getting close. Actually, I'm exceeding my consumption by 1%. And that would be satisfactory. My crude protein is, is very high, and it's represented at 17% on a crude matter, uh, a crude protein basis, well over the DIP or digestible intake protein at 127%, and metabolizable protein at 124. So we are overfeeding protein. So you can see our energy is deficient. 
uh, if everything was perfect, uh, calves would, or at least the software is saying that 2.56 pounds gain, uh, but uh, with an energy deficiency here, we're only attaining 1.96 pounds. So we need to, to adjust that accordingly. Now, look at sorghum. Uh, and, and again, I think this is important to double check the ingredients you select. I'm going to jump back into the feeds library to make double sure uh, that I'm selecting the appropriate feed. So I go to sorghum here. I got sorghum. It is, in fact, in the silage. It's priced at $32 a ton. Dry matter is 40%. And so, yes, uh, you know, I am utilizing a sorghum silage. Uh, a little confusing. I Perhaps renaming that should be sorghum silage in there. So on the output, sorghum is not confused with sorghum grain. And uh, as I said, uh, Carl and I worked on this uh, as this software was being established or developed in uh, August, September. And we certainly have room for making the library more representative for our users. OK. Uh, Dr. Hollis has told me that uh, I'm cutting out pretty badly. Uh, is that the case for everybody? Please. Uh, OK, Chris is saying he's. I am good there. Sandy, how am I? Ron says yes. Sandy, how are you? Sandy. OK, Sandy said she lost the whole thing for a while. Well, OK, she says she can hear me fine now. I apologize. Um, I'm a rank amateur with this uh, Adobe Connect. And uh, I look forward to uh, learning more about the, uh, just like using brands, you have to, I think we're going to have to just keep doing this form of communication to make it work. Uh, Justin, can you hear me? OK, Larry's saying fine now. Good. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Uh, back to the, to the feed library. Now, the, it's easy, again, out of habit. You may want to go down here and select the tab, especially if you use Excel a lot. Do not do that. Please do not do that. Go back up. If you make a modification here, and let's say you change the dry matter from uh, or the protein. You say, oh, that's not 8% protein. I'm going to put 8 in there. Uh, make sure that you reselect the buttons at the top because it will say the feed library has been updated and saved. Click OK. And now it takes you back to the diet that you have been working with. Again, you want to make sure test producer, the name of your producer is here. And also, these two key points right here, producer is test producer and your feed library is feed library. Now you can see the date, the gain that you are achieving, and you have some opportunity now to uh, fix uh, some of the problems that are in, in, encountering here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take wheat mids out completely because I, I'm high on protein already, and uh, I, I'm gonna really try to help my gain. I'm gonna shoot for two pounds gain. I'm dealing with a 550-pound calf. Uh, the rule of thumb is about 1% of a calf's weight in grain to achieve 2 pounds. So I'm going to use that simple number there. Come back and evaluate my protein and everything. Uh, I'm still a tad high on protein. If you go to NRC, uh, consumption is fairly close. Uh, I'm going to drop my, my alfalfa back to, uh, I'm just going to leave it there. And uh, well, there's soybean meal in there too. Look at that. I I brought in soybean meal. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take that out, and, and see what happens then. Uh, consumption falls, of course. Uh, protein falls. Uh, let's go back with a pound of soybean meal. Just kind of step it up and see where we're at. Bring in some more uh, sorghum silage. Uh, a pound of alfalfa in there, keep our roughage fairly consistent up there in the upper 50-50. Uh, now we're, ge we're getting pretty close. Uh, 
we might bump our bean meal back up to a pound and a half, perhaps. Uh, again, we're getting close. Protein is getting it's approximating. We, we still need more protein here. Uh, it's getting there on a crude basis, but you can see our metabolizable protein is, is well beyond the animal's needs, but we're short on DIP. So I'm, I'm going to throw a pound of, of, of wheat mids in there and see what we can do. Uh, we bring some degradable protein to the, uh, to the mix. Uh, maybe we ought to just do a, you know, I'm splitting hairs here, but you, you certainly can do this with a producer while you're on the phone. I, I've done it, and it works very well. Uh, I'm going to go up to two pounds, uh, and you can see what happens with consumption. Uh, Take this back down to 12 and put two in there on the on the alfalfa hay. Uh, we're a little high. Okay, I'm getting close. DIP is at 100. Uh, we're overshooting metabolizable protein. Our consumption's 100, and right now we're we are close to attaining the two pounds gain that say we're shooting for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this six pounds. And, and cycle this back to 1.75, and let's see what we got. But we're, we're ballparking it at, at 1.98 pounds. Uh, consumption is, is in the ballpark. I wouldn't be too concerned about a consumption of 101. Uh, DIP is, is awful close, uh, but over here on the far right screen here, you kind of got the, the, the gross estimates of what the diet is. And if you go into the old NRC and look up in the table on the lookups, uh, the NEM, NEG would be pretty darn close to what to what this uh, this particular diet is doing. Now, um, uh, one thing that that can be a problem at times and you know, is assuming the waste issue. And it, it is a, an issue with cows. If you're feeding in bunks, and obviously the waste may not be yet. Uh, I don't know if 5% is overshooting. Uh, in a in a dry lot environment, uh, maybe maybe so with the alfalfa and the sorghum silage that might be left in there, but you might be able to reduce these other ingredients. I, I think that's something you work with your producers and and ask them how how good of a feel they have for uh, the bunk cleanouts and so forth that may that may occur as they're feeding their animals. I'm going to click back to my monitor here to see if there's any questions. Uh, I see Carl has a question. Carl, do you have a question? I'm not sure whether or not I... I'm not sure that he had a question if he was... He raised his hand at some point, and I'm not sure that... Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I, but Carl, if you have a question, please speak up. Okay, Carl said he's, he's just learning the buttons, and I tell you, this Adobe Connect is just like brands. You've got to have patience, and uh, you've got to be patient with this technology. I think if we give it a chance, I think it'll work fine. Um, and so that, that's really uh, here at this point I, I want to point out. Now, notice on the grower mineral, I did not put anything there, and this happens uh, a lot, uh, and even with the salt. And, and that's something as we work with our producers, get a feel on the, the mineral that they're purchasing. And I think that's something that our group should take note of to provide to the agents is uh, a typical feed tag or if we should better modify a grower mineral to better represent what, uh, what a producer may encounter. But really encouraging a producer to uh, us to use a producer's label uh, to better uh, represent what we have in our feed library for whatever may be used. Because this uh, feature that's at the bottom with the uh, provided and required for our macro uh, and, and micro trace minerals and vitamins and so forth, I think is, is very powerful. At, but we just need to be, we need to pay attention to what the diet is showing us. And so I'm just going to put in, uh, you know, I'm going to put in uh, uh, a quarter of a pound, which would be four ounces, or maybe just two ounces. Let's do that. Uh, 
help me out here, a uh, quarter of a pound, uh, 16, I'm not going to do quarter of a pound, I lied, 16 ounces and at uh, 216 divided is, is 0.125. Uh, we need to make sure we put this in a, a, appropriately. Uh, for whatever the label may read or what we think the, uh, the producer is doing, we really need to be careful with that. Uh, you can see we, we our consumption now has drifted upwards to 102, 2% uh, above. Uh, I can remember once upon a time, uh, Gary Cool always shooting, uh, uh, making sure that protein and everything was about 5% above to attain the performance for the higher performing calves in a in a in a group uh, feeding situation. And uh, I think that's part of our cheat sheet task that we've talked about as a group internally. Uh, to make sure that our that our users are aware of some of the intricacies of that, uh, I can continue to hone away on this. The thing that really is valuable, and this just happened with me yesterday with a with a feed stock producer, is talking on the phone, selecting the ingredients the producer was using, and actually plugging in the amount that they were using while on the phone. Uh, there's incredible power with this software once you feel that you're able to comfortably navigate around it and make sure that you're comfortable with it. The, the ration summary and everything is, is easy to generate. Uh, You've got to be patient because this is a, a complex uh, piece of software utilizing Visual Basic. But uh, generating this, double checking this before you either fax it or save this document you send as a, an attachment in an in a email to a producer or to a fellow agent or what have you, I think are, are all very, very important to have. Uh, so I, I, think, I think this is, is a good example uh, that should be uh, uh, addressed or really leveraged as you work with your producers. Now, I, I put a yardage in here at 25 cents, and, and uh, if you're looking at costs and everything, with a lot of producers, you can see the cost per head per day, uh, the dollars per pound of gain. In this case, it's 52 cents. Now, I have uh, tr attempted to formulate, and I'm not so sure I like this feature. Uh, you can go ahead and hit it to see what happens, but I would be darn careful uh, buying anything that this feature uh, is able to do in terms of randomly throwing some values in this on a pounds per head per day basis. I'm going to go back and see if there's any questions. Uh, Sandy uh, asked a question, 5% above on pounds of crude protein per day. Uh, that's correct, Sandy. Uh, you know, I will certainly uh, invite comments from uh, Chris. I, I see Justin is on here. Uh, Larry, if you got any comments on that, uh, Chris, um, I'd be happy to, you know, we can talk about that. I, I tend to overshoot a bit just to, to make sure that the, the better performing calves in that feed group are, are actually uh, uh, able to meet their, you know, uh, not 13 to 18, no. I want to make sure that's, that's important too. Uh, I'm only talking about 5% above on pounds of crude protein per day. Uh, uh, just trying to, to shoot that level, I think, is, is something that I've, I've done in years, over the years. Uh, some people may argue that you're overfeeding protein, uh, but, you know, there's that select 5, 10, 15 percent in that group, in that pen setting, uh, that, uh, that will be performing above and you want to help them achieve their genetic potential. Uh, I'm going to go back, uh, and so uh, the the other thing is when you're done here, and this is where a lot of people get tripped up, is the saving of the files. Uh, I would make sure you put a, the name of the file in here, and I call this simply grower. Then you might notice there's a number one there, and I'll click and hit and save it. File is saved, but automatically number two comes back up. And this is a little confusing for people because when you're doing a diet for producer, you may do it over a, 
90-day period of time, and so this may be the second diet that you'll use in that series. If you're only doing it for a month, I would go back, put one, and then click on recall to bring that original diet back. And it's restoring ration number one. It is coming up. The name of the series is above is called test ration. Uh, or test ration, however you want to look at that. But it's being restored as we speak. And it does take a while. You have to have a little patience. It is taking time. Seems like minutes. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll up to the top. And you can see the name of the ration is... Dale, Carl has a question there. Okay. Carl's question is, when I, when I have to save a series of rations and then go to recall, the top information will be okay, but the amount of feed will be the last ration you did. Uh, that is correct, Carl. And I would like to show everyone an example of that. It will work. So, uh, bear with me. We, uh, we're getting close to the end of our session. And I again, I want to reemphasize from our Animal Science Update newsletter, there will be a session next Thursday at 10 o'clock with Carl, and the, the next Thursday on February the 5th with, uh, with Justin. And there will be information presented as well. But Carl, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, uh, I will go back. Uh, to this example, go back to my settings page, show you what I mean. Uh, I've got an example in here I call limit fed example. And I've selected that producer. I scroll down now to feeds. And you can see limit fed example feed meal. I'm going to hide that. Now, looky here. But the diets are here from the previous example. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six from what we did. I'm going to click on feed yard. And what we got now is just this. I got limit fit example. And I got limit diet in there. That's the one I created a while back. And I'm going to click on restore. And it's restoring those previous diets that I have created. OK? There is a number one and a number two. And those, those two values there correspond in a time series of diets being developed for animals over two different periods of time. Uh, so you may want to develop a diet for two weeks and then run them up to 30 days on diet number two. It's not complex. It's just a matter of, of uh, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm starting the feed period uh, last year on November the 1st. And the ration number is number one. And I'm feeding it for two weeks from November the 1st to November the 15th. Okay. Notice when I did the upgrade, it pulled my the ration ingredients for this example were brought up with the feed library associated with this specific example. Now, Carl asks about uh, what did I just do? Fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on number two. I want to cycle through this, but remember November 1st to November 15th. But now I want to go to the second series, and now I'm going to click off and then recall and it's restoring ration uh, number two in the series okay these calves come off at 578 pounds remember that number because I will now in ration number two that will be the new weight that is included for the second part of the feeding phase for these animals okay It's restoring it, and you have to be patient. And some of you may have slower computers, uh, and that's important. Now, I'm on number two, 
it, it did not change. Now, why? Uh, what you want to do is come up here. You want to select number two, okay? And you want to make sure that this ration number corresponds with the ration number that you wish to restore. It's easy to separate these two out and become lost, okay? I did that on purpose. So I'm going to restore the limit fed series ration number two. There are actually two parts of the software. You have the input, inputs component and the ration balancing screen component that are included in this software. And that's important. You got to keep those factors in mind when you when you do that. Okay? It's still loading up here. It is loading up. Okay, what happened here? Okay. Nothing happened. Okay? Well, what you want to do here in this case is now you want to come up here to November the 15th, 08, and you're going to feed through, let's just say, 11 or 12, 15, 08. And instead of 550, you're going to feed at 500, whatever that number was, 575 pounds. To include that, and now you're in the second part of this diet here, and you've projected beyond that. Now what you do now is you save that diet. And now number two is saved, but notice number three comes up now. It's ready for number three. If you're not done adjusting number uh, two or not proceeding on, you want to select number and you want to recall it, bring it back into the play. So you've got two segments of a diet that you're developing here. And I will show you where this comes into play. Okay. Uh, I assume everybody is still hearing me and I'm not talking to myself. I'm going to go back to brands. I think. I think it's busy right now. Okay, it's restoring the diet. Uh, now here's where this, and I'll just ignore the performance here for the time being. I'm doing, I did some limit restriction here. Uh, if you come down here to ration summary with the use of the series, Click on that, and uh, you get the series for the calf. You get you get all this information, and if you close the print review, uh, should be generating a uh, second part of this of this report. I think it still is working on that. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, I did a ration summary. Uh, it's the projection that I'm referring to. So here's where you can do a projection for your producer. Again, let's use quarter ahead a day. Uh, no interest rate. I don't know. Seven might be a little light. Uh, cattle purchase dollars per head. Say you did it at six hundred fifty dollars. Uh, death loss. Hopefully everything's straightened out, but you might want to put a quarter of a percent and the life sale. Uh, I don't know. You, you're going to feed them for a longer period, but let's say they're uh, dollars per hundred weight. Let's say they're uh, $92 a hundred. I hit OK, and it's, it's generating a results form now based on... Uh, on what you inputted for the two series for that period of time.
still working. It's it's processing. Please be patient. takes a while. Okay, here's uh, what I wish to show you is uh, it, it'll do a weekly uh, feed uh, with the series in here. And I'm not so sure. Here's projection number one uh, that shows you uh, the feeding period from the 8th all the way through the 13th. Uh, the dry matter ratio of what's being fed, energy content, interest, uh, all those sorts of things uh, it'll do for you. Uh, this is projection number two looking at the amount of feed required this is where you see where you make your money, dollar per cost per pound of gain. It breaks out your feed, your interest, your yardage. Uh, does it on a per pound per head per lot basis. And it tells you, it projects out what your unit's requirements are for the diet that you are feeding. So you have the opportunity to print it. Uh, if you print it, you also can, if you have Adobe PDF, uh, and I've done this a few times, is simply write the results, the output to a PDF file so that you simply can uh, use it, uh, attach it to an email and send it to a colleague or to a producer. But I think it really facilitates uh, generating information, uh, uh, promoting some uh, discussion and uh, perhaps opening some doors with working with producers in the respective districts or, or the counties that you work in. Um, I'm I'm a coming up on. Uh, I guess I'm going to close. I I don't know really what the impact of this session is. Uh, uh, whether or not we need to have a. Here's what you will learn today or not. I feel like I jumped around a little bit. Other than showing you the buttons. Uh, one other thing I do want to show you while it's fresh in my mind is this. Uh, back into the software. I'm going to go back to settings. I'm going to open up a producer that I, I uh, helped yesterday and uh, go to his examples. Okay, you might notice there's a feed library called Limit Fed. Uh, that's not the library that I worked with. Uh, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to restore, uh, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is go to Cal's and I'll show you what happened. Uh, that's another good example. Uh, you might look here, and this is important. This can happen. You're dragging in multiple producers. Here's the name of your producer. But if you scroll down here, these are not the feedstuffs that uh, were used with Mr. Good's uh, example. So I'm going to go back, OK, feeds. and select cows again and restore. That's important. Remember that. Just because you click on that name of the producer, uh, you also have to leverage the buttons here to restore what you did with that producer prior. And it's, it's taken a while again. It's loading stuff up. Now, here's what I want to point out here, and then I'll close uh, what I have to say and open for questions. I'm going to let this finish opening, uh, fill, opening up the uh, feed library attached with this particular diet. Okay, it brought in the feed library that was associated with what was done for this producer. Now, 
uh, remember on the uh, and I'm going to click over here and show you on the settings. Uh, Mr. Good selected medium sized mature cows, but we're doing a diet for first heifers, first calf heifers. Now let's go to settings and look at the weight for medium mature cows. 1,350 pounds. Uh, that is not what we were evaluating. And look what happened there. I clicked on the bottom there. I didn't do the rules, and I'm completely lost. So you go back to settings, you go back to the producer being worked with, click on that, select the feeds. Now you select, you go back to cows. Let's see what we got. It brought it back, and there's the, the feedstuffs and everything. Back to my point. These first calf heifers weigh 1,100 pounds, and this space here, specific for the cow module, is a weight overwrite. And remember, there are only default settings on on the settings page, and you better pay close attention. If you don't know the producer on the phone, uh, you might need to ask some probing questions to make sure that you are in the ballpark for meeting the diet. Uh, the reason I did that, and I'll show you quickly here, is if I take out that overwrite for 1,100 pounds, uh, estimated dry matter intake is at 23.6, and I got it at 23.1. Uh, remember that 23 pounds. If I take that out, all of a sudden, the estimated dry matter intake for those heifers is 27.1 uh, pounds, not the 23. It's driving that uh, right here. Feed delivery corresponds with the mature cow. So you need to pay attention to these outputs, folks. And so in this case, you may very you need to very very well put that weight overwrite back into the software to make the results more uh, palatable uh, for meeting the animal's needs. I think that that's very important. Uh, pay attention. Know your producers. And I think there's some very good learning opportunities that I haven't touched on, looking at the impacts of weather on requirements for the animal. We should have done that with the uh, backgrounding lot, and perhaps that'll be something that Justin or Carl can touch upon when they do their session. Uh, with that, I'm going to go back to the uh, page, Sandy, and I help ask you to help me jump in here, getting this thing set up for any questions that that you know the uh, produce that that you folks may have. Any questions, Dale? I'll ask the the first question, and it goes back to well. Number one, we need you to slow down a little bit with your pointer and okay. movement on the showing us things in the program. Um, on that first calf heifer diet, when? When do we go from using the heifer module to the cow module? Um, as soon as they can, well, that's what I did. Uh, and I'll, I'll be the first to, to admit that I've spent the majority of my time with the feedlot module. Uh, I'll go back to the brands again, Sandy. Uh, you know, if we go to settings again and select a producer, uh, I'll go back to this one here. And go to feeds. Again, you got to do this. You got to be regimented with how you drill down into the program you're going to use. Uh, you know, I really look. I look at the heifers, the heifer module, as being a development. Uh, the development uh, uh, for, and I see here there's birth and nursing in here as well. And I have not played much with this module. So hopefully, somebody will. Uh, can bring this in here and uh, start and kind of set this all up. I think there's some opportunities here. I I did not use this. I tried to use the mature cow and I drilled back because go to the cow. There is actually a first calf option right here, Sandy. That's that's where I was I was keying on, and I simply at the bottom here check these others off so I can focus solely on the, the first calf application. Did that answer your question?
Yeah, that helps. And then the reason you lowered the weight to their actual weight as opposed to mature cow weight was to get a better estimate of real dry yes. matter intake in that situation. Dry I wasn't intake. quite following that. Yes. You were too fast for me. Absolutely, because uh, again, working with the producer, uh, uh, it just didn't make. I mean, it, I was I was following the software and I was hitting that hundred percent, but the the producer was concerned that uh, it uh, out they were they were being overfed. So uh, yes, uh, you need to pay very close attention to that. Make sure that you're uh, dealing with the right size of beast. Anybody else have questions? Uh, you could raise your hand and start typing, perhaps. You're welcome, Larry. I hope that uh, I think we'll have some good things coming out of this. Okay. Several of the problems that. Um, we were having today with Rachel and Tressie trying to get on. Uh, Jerry kept asking if, if folks had been to the Connect training sessions. And I know I've been to another one and I'll probably try and do another just because of the repetition and, you know, trying to get more comfortable with things. So um, that's why I shared those times there. You don't have to do anything. You just uh, log on to those sessions and, um, I guess I don't have the address copied in there, but um, would suggest that maybe you try and do that, and I know that I will try and do that again. Um, I do have this recorded, and we'll get that information of that recording site out when I can get that. And then, Dale, did you pull up the dates of the subsequent ones just to review? right now? Yes, I did. Uh, the first date, Sandy, is uh, a week from today on the 29th with Carl Harbour. And uh, the next one scheduled is February the 5th at 10 a.m. with Justin. Uh, and I assume this will be the similar, the same address uh, for Justin to access and for participants to join him. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably what we'll do. And Justin, I don't know if you know, at this point in time, if you'll have some materials beforehand that they'll work on, or if you've got that figured out. I don't know if Justin is still on or not. Yeah, maybe maybe he left. So we'll try and find that out. Um, any other questions? Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a message here, uh, from Justin. Have not figured out yet. Wanted to see how today went. Good, good idea, Justin. Well, it would be my opinion that, that we need to make sure we all get some practice time on our own and not just watch the deal. So I hope that we get some assignments to help us uh, do that. And if there's nothing else, why well, I guess I'll stop the recording. And Thank uh, you for your help, Sandy. I appreciate it very much.